Hi guys, it's Pat, and I just wanted to share um, a couple of uh, projects that I've done for a swap hosted by Trudy Hutton on Life on the Scrap Beach. And um, this was a Halloween-themed um, tag swap, and um, she had a couple of, um, actually three different uh, categories, but I chose to do two. I chose to do a vintage Halloween and a regular Halloween. So, uh, and the requirement for the tag was <clears throat> that um, <clears throat> it had to open in some way, either uh, to the side or at the top or, you know, in any way. And I finally, after reading the instructions, figured out that it was more than a pocket that it actually needed to open. So I, I ended up um, creating a couple of tags, which uh, were a lot of fun to do. Halloween is uh, always just a, a favorite uh, for scrapbooking or creating projects. So um, this is my first tag, and this is the vintage Halloween tag. And um, I had all kinds of vintage images that I was going to use for this tag, but I ended up um, going with um, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I had purchased some vintage um, images from Red Lead, and one of them was Edgar Allan Poe, and um, I always um, think about him at Halloween because of the various things that he wrote, and um, there's an Edgar Allan Poe Museum in Richmond, Virginia, which is about, um, oh, maybe 40 miles south of me, uh, because he grew up in Richmond, Virginia, and then, um, say, 50 miles north in Baltimore, Maryland, there, there is another museum, and that's actually where he died, and he died under very mysterious circumstances. Um, so his entire life was very interesting. He was a um, one of the first Americans to try to make a living on his writing, and at that time there weren't any international copyright laws, so he, he lived in poverty his entire life because publications in America could just take something that was written in England and use it without paying for it. And um, they didn't want to pay American authors, so he um, he lived in his entire life uh, hurting for money. And his whole story is very interesting. Um, so, um, but he wrote, of course, The Raven and The Telltale Heart. Uh, the Raven is one of my favorite poems, and The Telltale Heart is, I think, one of the most gripping uh, short stories. So, and he's considered uh, the, the uh, uh, invent inventor of the detective story. So anyway, uh, so I did this in honor of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, so here's the tag, um, and um, on the front of the tag, just some layering here with a, a black rose, and uh, I'll show you uh, how this works in a minute, but I want to go ahead and open the tag. Um, so uh, it does open, and uh, there is, this is a pocket that has a tag in it that seems to want to be stuck right now. And I might have just, sometimes you just get it in a kind of a little funny place there. But anyway, so here's a photo mat. And then on this side, um, this is a, a little stamp uh, from the poem, The Raven, Once Upon a Midnight Dreary while I pondered weak and weary. And then I put, I've uh, started putting my stamp on my projects because, mostly because I've done a lot of swaps and, you know, usually sometimes it's just a little sticky and it falls off and I don't know who did it and I'd like to give credit. So I started stamping all of my work and uh, in case somebody does want to know who did it. And if they don't like it, they can put a picture or something over it, you know. It's not like it has to be permanent, but it is there in case they're interested. So that's a little stamp uh, that was also from Red Lead um, regarding the Raven. And then Tim Holtz's uh, ticket stamp. And then in this is also a little pocket here. And um, it's another tag for journaling or a picture, whichever. So the front of it, and this is my favorite part, is um, it's a swivel. And this swivels out of the way to reveal the raven. And 
and behind that is Edgar Allan Poe, his ghostly image, because his ghost is rumored to haunt uh, several places. So um, what I did was I stamped a transparency with a uh, another uh, raven stamp that I got from Red Lead. Let's see if I have something here that I can put under there to show you the actual what the transparency really looks like. So that's the transparency. But when it's sitting on top of that ground pile, it makes him look like a ghost. But that's, that does swivel up and out of the way. So then you can actually see Poe. So that's my vintage um, tag. And it's, this is just uh, held together with a little, uh, I forget what you call those, but it's a little brad that swivels over. And then on the back is just a little pocket with my information. Um, so that's my tag for um, the um, vintage the uh, vintage Halloween. Um, so then I made the regular Halloween tag and my inspiration for this one was a poison cupboard. Uh, it comes from um, Teresa Collins' um, Haunted Hollows. Most of the papers come from that and then actually on the back here I used one of the um, uh, papers from the Apothecary Emporium from Echo Park. And I forgot to mention on the first tag, uh, the green, that was all um, from Pink Paisley's, um, I think it's called Phantom. So, well, I've got this turned over. <laughs> I have a little stamp here, but, um, you know, that could be covered with, a, you know, another little leaf or something if somebody wanted to get rid of it. So, uh, but it's there in case, uh, you know, somebody does want to know who, who created the tag. And then there, that's my little thing with my information. So going back to the front, and these are these images are all different on each tag, uh, a little bit different. So um, anyway, I got out my um, um, die, my um, cabinet die. It's actually a cabinet die from Tim Holtz, which I had hadn't really used, um, and. Um, use that to make my poison cabinet. So, this opens right here, and inside are a bunch of poisons. So, um, and I got a little carried away with the poisons because um, it's supposed to be that when you open it you have a place for journaling or you have a um, place for a picture. And I put too many poisons in here, but, you know, I think you could always, like, tear one of those off and put a picture on top of it. But I did put um, a lot of tags in here. So um, this tag is has the Tim Holtz Halloween uh, Muse, one of the Halloween Muse tokens. This one happens to say Halloween. Um, this is a little uh, jar full of poison, and that's on a, another tag comes out like this, and then back behind here I have a small tag, just a little orange tag. So, um, so that's, that's, and then this paper back here, all, all of this, except for the very back page, is Teresa Collins. So that is, uh, um, spiders back on the, on that page. So anyway, that was, uh, I think, uh, between this one and Phantom, those are my two favorite uh, collections this year that I've been working with. So um, I'm going to try to make a couple of minis um, with, with uh, these two. Okay, so those are my two tags. Then Tr um, Trudy also had a... Um, here. Trudy also had a um, charm swap for Halloween. So this is my charm that I created and this charm is called Spooky. Uh, lots of fun. Just lots of fun to uh, create uh, I think anything for Halloween. Um, so this has, it's got oh, 
all kinds of little, uh, there's a little ghost, uh, just little, um, I found these lamp work beads a couple of months ago and purchased them, and these colors, it's just got the blue and the orange, and um, I don't know, they were similar to the Halloween colors, and I wanted something to kind of mix in there with my Halloween beads, so some more ghosts, and um, I also tried something a little bit new. Um, I'm inspired by a lot of the ladies on another swap that I belong to or join or, I mean, well, frequent, I guess you might say. And um, this was um, one of the ladies on there. I think it's Paper Diva 67. She does um, some, um, she just does a lot of work with chains, and I thought Halloween would be a perfect time for me to experiment with uh, some chains. So I actually have three different chains on here. Um, this is my, I call this my ghost chain because it has the little ghost on it. And then I've got a little square die there. Um, this is the actual chain that came with the Tim Holtz swivel clasp. So, and you can see we have some, a variety of, um, things on there. And then I added this uh, larger chain and put um, uh, some various things, uh, charms on it. And down here I've got another one of the Tim Holtz Halloween Muse tokens. It says Frightful. So, and then of course a hand. So that is my uh, spooky charm. Um, and I used the cabinet die again because I had it out and I, I've been meaning to use it. I actually went to a class where um, they used the cabinet die to make a mini and it was so adorable. So I'm going to be um, doing some more projects with it. But anyway, uh, I thought Halloween would be a good time to get the cabinet out. So this um, this is part of, um, it's actually, I don't know how well it's going to really show up on the video, but it is part of a, um, uh, a trim that I hoard. I Every now and then I'll cut one of the flowers off of it because I just love it. And I got it at Hobby Lobby. I've never seen it there since. So, I, But it's one of my very favorites. Um, and then I just have a fall leaf here. And you turn this over. And um, I also have the mini die, which I would really recommend because uh, you can do so much with it. And then here is... Uh, my information tucked there and again I stamped my name here and uh, this is glittery so I don't know if that's going to show up without a glare but uh, also you know you could put something over that if you wanted to, to uh, get rid of it so that is spooky my charm for Halloween and this is all going off to Trudy so uh, Trudy thanks for hosting um, if anybody has an opportunity, if you're on Life on the Scrap Beach and you happen to see that Trudy's hostessing um, a swap, then, um, you know, I encourage you to join because she's a great hostess and very reliable. Um, so anyway, that's it, guys, and thanks for watching.